in the last video, I started talking initially about this whole P versus NP problem and really laying some of the very, very basic aspects of it in place. And I ended that video by looking at the traditional grade school addition algorithm. So in general, imagine you had uh, two numbers and they were, let's say, uh, both n digits each. Okay, and let's uh, imagine they're n digits and you have to add them together. Uh, using the grade school algorithm, what you would basically end up doing is you would essentially go uh, column by column and you'd perform, uh, you'd add each column and if there was a carry, you'd, you'd carry something over and each column would involve doing uh, one or two basic addition operations. And by basic, I mean addition operations that require only being able to add the numbers between uh, zero and nine, okay? And then possibly having to add one more if there was a carryover. So anywhere between, between one or two additions, additions per column, okay? Now, if you think about it, what that means is that the running time, the number of basic operations required to add two numbers that are n digits each is going to be proportional, is going to be proportional to n, okay? And we actually write that in computer science. We say that when the running time of an algorithm is proportional to n, we basically say that it has a running time of big O of n. That means it's, it's requires on the order of n steps. It's about anywhere from, from n to two n steps, if, if you are in the worst case scenario, but really it's proportional to n, okay? Now, what that typically means is that the, the running time is proportional to the input size. And in this case, we refer to this notion when something is proportional to the input size, or the running time rather is proportional to the input size, we refer to that notion as being a linear, a linear time algorithm, okay? And put a bit differently, maybe a bit of intuition, is that let's say you had, uh, you had to add two 100 digit numbers. That would take about 10 times the complexity, the 10 times as long as adding two 10 digit numbers, okay? That's because the growth is linear. So maybe I should, I should spell that a, a bit more explicitly. So um, adding, adding 100 digit numbers okay, is about 10 times more expensive than adding 10 digit numbers, okay? And that, that makes sense because the running time grows linearly, okay, it grows proportionally with the size of the input, okay? And I'm, I'm belaboring this point because ultimately the goal of the field of computational complexity theory is to really ascertain the amount of time it takes to solve particular problems, okay? The complexity of solving those problems falls under the domain or the aegis of computational complexity theory, which is where this whole P versus NP problem will come into play, okay? Now, in the case of addition, it's pretty clear that you can't actually add numbers in sublinear time. Uh, that is, you can't actually add numbers in significantly less time or add them you know, at a faster time than something that's proportional to the size of the input or to the, or proportional rather to the number of digits. And you might wanna take a moment and think about why that might be the case. Uh, after all, if somebody came up to you and said that they could correctly or always correctly add two n digit numbers in significantly fewer than n steps, would you believe them, yes or no? And if you have a sense, um, and you might wanna take a, take a moment to pause the video and think about that for a moment, but I think that if you wanna understand why, well, if you think about it, if you have to add two numbers, you actually have to read the numbers. You, you can't actually add two numbers without reading them. And if you have to read the numbers, that's gonna require on the order of n steps because you've got to actually read every single, every single number. You also have to be able to write the answer out. That's also gonna require a number of steps, okay? And so you need a number of steps that's proportional to n, to the number of digits, just to read the numbers. If you don't actually read the numbers, no matter how clever you are, you will be able to add them correctly. Well, hopefully that makes some sense. This is why the, the minimal time to add two n-digit numbers is going to be linear. And so what that gives you a sense for is that the grade school algorithm for adding two n-digit numbers is pretty much optimal. It's, it's more or less optimal. Okay, maybe you can, you can do a little bit faster, but you can't do it significantly faster, at least not in a way that really beats this whole proportional to input size uh, lower limit. Okay, so let me switch gears a bit and talk about another problem that's uh, hopefully very familiar to you, which is the problem of multiplication. So imagine I asked you to multiply 
two numbers according to the traditional grade school algorithm. Uh, so for example, let's say I had to multiply, I don't know, 23 times, uh, let's say, 37, okay? Now in that case, the way you would do it is you would do a bunch of cross multiplications. So I would do 7 times 3 to get 21. I would carry the 2. 7 times 2 is 14, and I add the 2 to get 16. Okay, so now I've, I've multiplied the 7 effectively by 23. Then I put a 0 here in the in the 1's place, and I repeat the same procedure with the 3. So I've effectively multiplied 3 by 23, which involves first multiplying 3 by 3 to get 9, then 3 by 2 to get 6. Okay, and now I have these two partial sums, 161 and 690, and when I add them together, I get 851. Okay? Now what I've really done effectively is I've cross multiplied. I've basically taken each digit and I've multiplied it with every other digit. So for example, I took the seven here and I multiplied it by both three and two. Then I took the three and I multiplied it by three and two as well. And then I added everything up. And so effectively I needed for every single digit, okay, for each digit I needed um, n steps or roughly a linear number of steps uh, per digit because each digit had to mul be multiplied by every other digit, okay? And since I have n digits total, okay, since I have to repeat this process for each digit, um, the total number of steps is going to be about n squared, okay? Okay, that's basically n squared is just n times n because I needed to do n basic multiplications per digit and I have n digits. So I get a total time of approximately n squared. And in computer science parlance, when we have a running time that's proportional to, to n squared, we say the running time is big O, big O of n squared. Okay, so kind of repeating the example above here, if I had to add, or let's say I had to multiply rather, two 10 digit numbers. Okay, multiplying two 10-digit numbers is going to be about a hundred times more expensive than just multiplying two one-digit numbers. Okay, so um, uh, you know, multiplying multiplying two uh, or multiplying 10-digit numbers is 100 times more expensive. 100 times more expensive than multiplying. Uh, the multiplying one-digit numbers, okay? Because there's a quadratic blow-up. There's a blow-up with respect to the square. And I, let me actually write that terminology down so it's more clear. Uh, we call this a quadratic, a quadratic increase in running time, okay? Now, this term quadratic may be one you've heard in the past. Um, for example, in mathematics, people often talk about uh, something known as a quadratic equation. Okay, and a quadratic equation basically is an equation, if you recall, of the form um, a times x squared plus b times x plus c, where uh, a and b are, are, let's say, real numbers, and x is a variable, and typically you want to figure out things around when this equation is equal to zero, and so on and so forth. Okay? And really, a quadratic equation is just an example of a polynomial in general, but where the degree of the polynomial, that is the, the exponent associated with the highest order term, is 2. Okay, is two. All right. Now, in general, let's say we have an algorithm that, and now here we have an n squared algorithm. Previously, I talked about an order n algorithm. In general, if we have an algorithm that can run in time big O of n to the k for a fixed integer or fixed constant value k, we call this type of an algorithm a polynomial time algorithm. A polynomial time algorithm. Okay, basically it's an algorithm that runs in order n to the k for a fixed value of k. Uh, so for example, uh, and, and, and when we say n to the k, n here represents the, and this is actually a very subtle point, but I think one that comes up quite frequently, it represents the input, the input size, okay, not the value of the input, but the size of the input. In other words, the input size here is not 23, the input size is actually there, there are two digits, and, and it's the, the number of the amount of space it takes to encode the actual problem statement, not not the actual magnitude of what you're trying to multiply, but the amount of space required to encode the problem itself. Okay, and so for example, when you looked at the the grade school addition and multiplication algorithm, they both run in polynomial time, and in particular for the standard addition algorithm, we have 
a value of k equals 1 because that runs in order n time or linear time. So there's an implicit exponent of implicit exponent of 1 here. Okay? Uh, and so k equals 1 for the standard grade school algorithm. For the standard grade school multiplication algorithm, we have a value of k equals 2, right? Because it's a square running time, it's a quadratic running time. Um, if, for example, we had another algorithm that was running in, let's say, if we had, let's say, k equals 3, uh, that would lead to what's known as a, as a cubic algorithm. Okay, if we had k equals 4, in other words, a running time of, of uh, n to the fourth, okay, that would be a quartic time algorithm, and so on and so forth, and quintic, etc. Okay, um, and I think this is, I'm just trying to belabor the point to make it really clear, but in general, what we're going to be interested in are polynomial time algorithms. So I will stop this video right here. In the next video, I'm going to talk a bit more about this notion of polynomial time and explain why it's really important in the context of this broader P versus NP problem.